Hello one and all. My name is Neelima and I am ACE Engineering Academy Faculty for General Studies. Well, we are very happy to announce a new series that is the Atmanirbhar series which we are launched on our digital platform DeepLearn. This the idea of this video is to give you insights on the latest current affairs that is happening so that you're equipped with the recent news as well as uh, helps you to build your general knowledge. This video is not just intended towards students. It is also for anybody who is interested to know about things happening around them. Why is it so important? Well, we all know knowledge helps us to build our personality. And when we know things around us, it gives us it gives us the confidence, right? So that's the idea of doing the Atmanirbhar series. And today, the first episode of Atmanirbhar talks about Olympics. So let's look at Olympics, the history of Olympics, and how far we have traveled so far. Let's understand. What is the historical background of Olympics? Now, for people who are appearing for competitive exams, let me tell you, there were questions which were related to the history of Olympics also. So let's look at what this is all about. Well, uh, as you all must be already knowing, Olympics started out in Greece. So it's the original Greek games. And it was... It, it used to take place once in every four years, which is, again, that's how the, the, the pattern has been. And the earliest record of the Olympic Games goes back to 776 BC. So you can understand how old these games are and why are they so prominent in the world. Well, so the original Olympics, you can look at some of the pictures here, how they were. And it started off with a foot race, which was around 183 meters at that point in time. And the competitions were also in terms of, you can see, music, oratory, theater performance and so on. So that was the ancient Olympics. But then let's look at the origin of the Olympic Games. See, the origin is it, it used to be celebrated or, you know, men all over from Greece. Mind you, women were not participating at that point in time. It were only men. So men all over from Greece had come over. Uh, you know, they used to participate in the Western Greece in, you know, in Ellis. And it was called Olympic Games because the place was called Olympia. And when we talk about once in four years, it's called as Olympiad. So the dating technique or to count the number of years depended on Olympiad. So one, you know, it used to not, it was not counted as years. It was counted as Olympiad. So which was once in every four years. Okay. So the Olympic Games was a religious festival to honor the Greek gods Zeus and Hera. So let's look at, so this is Zeus and this is Hera. So the Olympic Games are held in honor of these Greek gods. Well, who started this? So these games actually, uh, you know, it started long time back. But then in 394 AD, the games were ended by the Roman, Roman Emperor Theodosius. So he ended the games. Now, this is how it was in the ancient world. Today, when we look at the modern Olympics, we, it took us 1,503 years for the Olympics to return and, you know, after the 393 AD. So that's how, that's how it started. So because we've seen that it was stopped, right? So the first modern Olympics was held in Athens in Greece in 1896. So... So now, let's look at how we have traveled from the ancient to the modern Olympics. Well, it took us 1,503 years for the modern Olympics to return. And then it was the first time it was held was in Athens in Greece. And who was the man who did it possible? So he is the man who made it possible, Mr. Baron Deed 
Coubertin. So a French man, he was responsible for the rebirth of Olympics. He presented the idea in 1894 and the games were held in 1896. The, so the first modern day Olympics was held in the year 1896 in Athens, Greece. So uh, initially, he thought that the games, you know, it can be in Paris, but then delegates from 34 countries were so uh, enthralled about the concept of uh, Olympics that they said, let's have it in Athens. So that's how the modern Olympics started. Well, we all know about the rings of uh, the Olympics. What do these rings signify? The five rings signifies the five continents of the world. Well, Oceania, which includes Australia, right? And these rings. So the Olympic flag, the five rings, it was created for the Olympic Jubilee Congress in 1914 in Paris. And uh, that was on the celebration of the 20th anniversary of the Olympic movement. And the five interlocking rings were first drawn again by the father of the modern Olympics, which is Pierre de Coubertin. And he was the founder, as I said, of modern Olympics in 1913. So the design is symbolic. It represents the five continents of the world. and it means it is united by Olympism. That's what it means. And the six colors are those that appear on all the national flags of the world present at that time. So that's what it is all about. Well, the Olympic Games, it's an international multi-sport event which occurs once in every four years, as we all know, and it is organized by the International Olympic Committee. And you have thousands of athletes who participate in a variety of competitions. Well, some of the Olympic symbols are very exciting to know about it. And it is also important from exam point of view. Winners, medals, they, uh, as we all know, we have the gold, silver and the bronze. And that tradition of the medals started only in 1904. So it was the modern Olympics there. And the Olympic flame, I'm sure you all must be knowing that there is so much always about before the Olympic starts, the, you know, the flame is much talked about event. So months before the games actually begin, the Olympic flame is first lit in Olympia. And that's a ceremony that reflects the ancient Greek rituals. As you can see in that picture, you can see some women there who are actually lighting the cauldron, the flame, right? So what exactly it is? Let's look at that one. So the Olympic flame, if you see, it's a symbol that is used in the Olympic movement. And it is, what does this uh, flame signify? It signifies continuity between ancient and modern games. So this was one of a, a previous question uh, which was asked by UPSC in the engineering services exam. So it's a symbol of continuity. Several months before the Olympic Games, the Olympic flame is lit at Olympia, Greece. And you know, you have the cauldron, we just saw that picture. And the flame continues to burn throughout the duration of the games and it is extinguished only during the closing ceremony. So the lighting of the Olympic flame is a very, very important event as in you can see. And how is it actually lit, the flame? So it is ignited several months before the opening. You see that there are a group of women we had seen there, right? Uh, these women, they, they are called as the Vestal Virgins. So they are supposed to be the priests of the gods of uh, Zeus and Hera. And they perform a celebration at the Temple of Hera in which the first torch of the Olympic torch relay is kindled by the light of the sun. So basically the sun's rays are concentrated on this parabolic mirror and that's how the flame is lit. And then these women, they present the torch and the olive branch to the first relay bearer who is usually a Greek athlete. 
are usually and they release a dove. So this is the ritual that happens before the Olympics start. Let's look at the Olympic Oath. It was first introduced in the 1920s for the Summer Olympics. The Oath, the idea was that, you know, the ancient Olympic Games, you know, the, the, the players or the athletes used to swear beside the statue of Zeus. Now, this was done so that there is to ensure that there is, you know, this complete fairness and impartiality. That was how this oath was taken. So in the 1920, this was the oath. We swear we will take part in the Olympic Games in a spirit of chivalry for the honor of our country and for the glory of sport. So this is how the oath was. But today, times have changed. And to keep up with the changing time, the oath is changed. So this is the oath today. So you have a very elaborate oath there and this talks about, you know, we promise to take part in the games respecting and abiding by the rules and in the spirit of fair play, inclusion and equality together. We stand in solidarity and commit ourselves to sport without doping, without cheating and without any form of discrimination. We do this for the honor of our teams, in respect for the fundamental principles of Olympism and to make the world a better place through sport. So if you look at the idea of Olympics, it is all about to celebrate the oneness and togetherness of the world through sport. Well, a lot of games there, you see. So the Olympic Games, they consist of uh, around 26 sports, 30 disciplines and nearly 300 events. The Summer Olympics is generally called as Olympics. We also have the Winter Olympics, which is generally, you know, ice-based, uh, a lot of ice-based games and so on. So uh, the number of countries which participate in the Summer Olympics is very high, 200 plus countries compared to the Winter Olympics. Well, now that we've seen the history of Olympics, let us look at uh, India's performance. Well, British India's performance at the Olympics to start with. All right. So as you can see in this picture, this is Mr. Norman Pritchard. He was the first Asian to win the Olympics medal and he won it for the 200 meters hurdles. So he won the silver medal and he was an Anglo-Indian and later on uh, he went on to settle after independence he went on to settle in the United States and under and he was the first Olympian to act in uh, Hollywood movies by the name Norm Norman Trevor. So that's Norman Pritchard for us the first ever Asian to win the Olympics medal from British India. India had an amazing history of Olympics or the British India wherein the Indian hockey team outshined every time they, they went ahead, they went to participate in the Olympics. So if you look at uh, the 1928 Amsterdam, we, went, we won the gold medal and uh, of course the man who uh, had a golden uh, hockey stick was Mr. Dhyan Chand. So he had an amazing, stupendous performance at that time, at that point in time. So there we see the role of India in Olympics, if Dhyan Chand there. So Dhyan Chand was a well-known hockey player. He took part in the 1928, 32 and 36 Olympic Games and India won all the gold medals in all the matches he has taken part. And of course, he was awarded the Padma Bhushan by the Indian government too. Then, in 1932, so he is Roop Singh, the brother of Dhyan Chand. So he was again a wizard in hockey and it was because of him or his contribution to the team that we won the gold medal in Los Angeles in 1932. 
Well, again, Berlin, 1936. With Dhyan Chand as the captain, the Indian hockey team completed a hat-trick of Olympic gold medals at the Berlin 1936. So, continuously, we won in, you know, a hat-trick. We won the gold and this time, again, Dhyan Chand outperformed. Now, let us look at the post-independence performance of India at the Olympics.